is storytelling, and there are many ways and in many settings that you can tell a great story. This video discusses the four main types of stages and how shows function in each, so let's start with the first type of theater space, which probably you're most familiar with, a proscenium stage. While this type of stage may be familiar to you, the name of it may not be. The word proscenium is Latin and means in front of the scenery. Proscenium originally referred to the stage area where the story took place in front of the scenery. In a proscenium theater, the audience directly faces the stage, which is typically raised several feet above the front row of the audience level, and views the performance through the proscenium arch, which is essentially like a picture frame through which you see the story of the play come to life. From one side of the proscenium arch to the other, along the floor, is an imaginary line called the plaster line. It was named such from when proscenium arches were ornate and adorned with plaster figures such as angelic beings above the stage. In a proscenium theater, all measurements start from the plaster line, which is like the stage's zero. First electric, second electric, third electric, and so on start from the plaster line and go towards the back of the stage. First catwalk, second catwalk, and so on start from the plaster line and go toward the back of the house. Also, set designers use the plaster line along with the center line of the stage for reference, point, reference points when designing and creating set plans. Downstage from the plaster line on a proscenium stage is an area known as the apron. Although the apron was traditionally not used as acting space since it was outside of the play's picture frame, nowadays it is more and more used as we try to give our audiences a more personal experience, the type of experience that modern audiences can get from a movie in their living rooms but find it hard to get from a play that is staged too far away from them. This, of course, is a director's preference as to whether or not to use the apron as acting space, although sometimes this choice is dictated by fire code, which requires that the space stay clear for the theater's fire curtain to drop if needed. The second type of stage is an arena stage, where the audience sits on all four sides of the stage. Actors enter down the same aisles the audience uses, as they are the only entrances and exits available. This stage provides a very intimate feel and works well with a smaller cast and a limited number of set pieces. Scene changes for this set are usually limited because it clutters the stage and blocks the audience's view. Since stage directions, such as upstage, downstage, stage left, stage right, right, are irrelevant with this type of stage, sometimes directors use compass directions, such as north, south, east, and west, or clock directions, one o'clock, two o'clock, and so on. Strong blocking choices for a show on an arena stage is critically important so that audience members can best see the action. Placing characters on diagonals, using the stage corners as guides, and turning much of the action inward are choices that make seeing the show more enjoyable for the audience. The third type of stage is a thrust stage. This type of stage is basically a combination of the proscenium and arena stages. Imagine taking the apron of a proscenium stage and thrusting it into the audience until there's audience on all three sides. On this stage, the actors enter and exit through audience aisles or upstage entrances and exits. And turning the play's action inward on diagonals is also important for this type of stage as well. The final type of stage is what is known as a flexible, or sometimes called an environmental, stage. Flexible stages can take on many different forms and functions and allow for extreme creativity on the part of the director. Here is just one example of how flexible staging could work. Black box theaters are a type of flexible theater space, but outdoor theater and various other types of non-traditional theater spaces could be included. Here's our Rockford High School proscenium stage. Now, you probably don't recognize it because for this show, Flowers for Algernon, which I directed in 2008, it was converted into a black box theater space. For this show, the stage and the audience seating were both placed on the main stage and drapes and a lighting grid were hung to create an intimate space for an intimate show. Staging the show this way also allowed us to bring to the surface a metaphor of that particular show, a maze, which we projected onto the stage floor piece by piece at different points as the story and character progressed. This maze was in no way written into the script, but staging the show in a different type of theater space allowed us to develop the show's metaphor into a real, live visual for the audience. On a proscenium stage, the audience would not have seen the maze or some of the other intricacies of the show. 
but creatively adjusting the way and the space in which we told the story allowed the audience to have a completely different theatrical experience. As you've heard me say many times, both on my videos and in this class, theater is storytelling. When it comes to the stage the story is told on, bigger is not always better, and sometimes less is even more. Any story and script can take on many different shapes. What's most important is that the story is told, and that it's told well.